Good day, everyone. I'll be talking today about nutrient management for medical cannabis uh, cultivation. Um, when we think about cannabis, it's not a new crop for humanity. It's been used by huma humanity uh, since ancient times, either as an industrial crop for fiber production, which we're, I will not be talking about today, or for medical use, recreational use, and because of the potential to help Humanity also it was it received the religious uh, value. So when we look at the medical cannabis in terms of medical use, it's very obvious that already in China there are there are evidence for use of uh, for medicine uh, since almost 3000 BC. This is, for example, the Emperor, Emperor Shayang that was known to use medical uh, plants as well, and it was known to prescribe cannabis for a wide range of medical indication which already tells us that he uses various strains of cannabis, which entails various chemical composition. And we can see in Egypt tombs from 5,000 years ago, and in India more than 2,000 years ago, there is a wide range, wide use of cannabis for medicine. But it's not only in ancient history, also until recently, for example, in the 18th century, beginning of the 19th century, there was a very conventional use of cannabis for, uh, for medicine. It was a very powerful tool for medicine. And one of my favorite commercial, I found this on the internet, it says, tell your neighbors, family and friends, cannabis, the medicine of choice. So it was very well known, very well used and the, the used by humanity. And the, the information and the level that, you know, of science that was known was very limited, of course, at the time to the scientific knowledge at the time or conventional usage knowledge at the time. So if cannabis is being used and it's being used for such a wide range of indications, we also have today um, knowledge about the a wide range of indi indication ranging from neurological to pain to anti-inflammatory and more. It actually means that we are taking a medicine, a, a plant material that has a very large variety of active compounds in it. So the power of cannabis really sources from the biological activity of the components, which are secondary metabolites. Specific, and specifically, the main compounds are either cannabinoids, which are almost specific to cannabis, and terpenes and flavonoids, which are found in many other plants, Altogether, some people call cannabis the plant of the 1,000 molecules because there are nearly 1,000 molecules of even more that has bi biological therapeutic ac activity. And all this array of, me of medical uh, activity or medical compounds or secondary metabolites are affected by two main factors. One of them is genetic. This is the strain. This is the potential for production. And different strains and different cultivars have a very uh, diverse um, chemical profile, secondary metabolite profile. The other one that we'll be focusing today is environmental conditions, because the actual production or fulfilling the potential for, uh, for uh, developing and for producing cer certain chemicals comes from uh, largely affected by environmental conditions. What kind of environmental conditions? Where well, we're in a, in a nutrition conference, so obviously we're going to focus today about nutrition. But overall, secondary metabolite is plants are being affected, can be affected by light, by temperature, by stress conditions. And today I'll convince you that in cannabis is affected the secondary metabolism and of course production and morphology are affected by nutrition. So mineral nutrition, and this is what we'll be talking about today, affect on the other hand, this is very trivial in plants, affect morphology and physiology, therefore yield quantity but it also affects secondary metabolism, which is in yield quantity, which is cannabis is of critical importance because it's a medical plant. Well, until recently with the change of regulation, there was hardly, or there was no research on cannabis, no legal research on cannabis since 1961, but an international treaty was signed that banned use of cannabis for everything, including research. So all of a sudden now, at least in Israel, it was in 2016, it became legal. We started having an ability to research the plant and to study the plant and the main, and it gained status as a medical pro pro a, a product. But it was very difficult to start supplying and we are supplying it to patients because there was absolutely almost zero knowledge about how to cultivate 
plant sciences, agronomy, physiology, any other aspect, because it hasn't been st studied since the 50s. So this was kind of the main challenge. I started working on cannabis about six years ago. I was asked by, I was approached by the Ministry of Health to start dealing with nutrition, uh, to start dealing with plant, uh, with plant science in cannabis to help the growers. And I was sure that I'll open the internet and I'll find vast amount of information and I start searching and I found zero. And it, I came to realization that in order to, I have to start with zero really, in order to establish kind of a system for research and to ask first, first to define questions. So one of the most important thing in cannabis is in, in plant material and medicine, medical material is standardization. Because if we look at cannabis and it can be of, uh, um, this is reproductive stage in the flowering stage, because the flower, the inflorescence or the yield, the medical, the yield that's being used for medicine or recreation. And there are inflorescences on the top, uh, epical inflorescence and uh, on the bottom and on the side, some of them are more shaded than not. And the question is, and question is, what in terms? Well, how does this affect the chemical uh, chemical uh, profile, the medical profile? So one of the first thing that I did, it was about six years ago. It was with Soraya Koch, a master student in the lab at the time. And for example, I want to show here two cannabinoids, which are specific for almost specific for cannabis, THC and CBD. And we were looking at the concentration from the bottom of the plant, in fluorescence from the bottom of the plant, center and top of the plant. And we sometimes we see even two times or even three times changes in concentration, which is highly unacceptable for a plant material that needs to be supplied for patients. And it's not like if they're using one gram or half a gram, it's just, it can't be like they're using three pills or, or one pill or four pills in analogy to using a conventional medicine. So standardization of the, of the, uh, of the secondary metabolite profile is critical. And also effect of on specific compounds is critical. And therefore studying how to cultivate a plant nutrition or otherwise is critical in order to produce a plant material uh, which will be suitable for the budding, for the growing and exploding cannabis in the industry. So the first thing that I did was I, we asked ourselves, is mineral nutrition, does it affect secondary metabolism? It should we look into it. So this is the first experiment that we conducted about six years ago, five years ago. And we checked commercial cultivation, commercial fertilization at the time in, a, in one of the growers' uh, farm. And in, the, in comparison to increased phosphorus or increased NPK or increased humic acid. Why humic acid? Because the growers many times say you use humic acid, you increase your cannabinoid uh, production. And what we found out is two things. One of them was really strongly showing that nutrition affects they have a very large impact on secondary metabolism in cannabis. For example, if we look at CBN, we can see that addition of NPK reduced CBN concentration. And when we look and we, and when we look at the CBG, then uh, NPK actually increased CBG concentration. So the effect was cannabinoid, spe cannabinoid specific and various uh, mineral concentration minerals affected uh, secondary metabolism differently. So that was interesting. And he told us that the changes that we did here in nutrition were minor. And even though we were talking about only 20% or 30% more phosphorus or more NPK, it had a drastic effect on concentration, meaning that we have to be incredibly careful with mineral nutrition. And first of all, to understand how it affects um, uh, plant uh, nutrition, uh, how it affects the um, secondary metabolism, and of course, uh, morphology and development. So the... Um, up to now, so the first thing that we did, we said, what do we, how do I approach this thing? There's no information. So we said, we'll approach this, even though it's a very ancient crop, I'm going to treat it as a new crop. So what do we do with new crop? Usually we start N, P, and K, phosphorus, nitrogen, and, and potassium. And we evaluate say, a range of uh, concentration and we check for an effect. So this is what we did in the first, the, in the first uh, that was the first step that we did. We've advanced much, for, much further. Uh, later today that I'll mention briefly. And today I'm going to show you some results from six experiments that we conducted for two for nitrogen, two for phosphorus and uh, two for potassium. Why two? Because cannabis is a short day plant, meaning that under exposure to long photo period, it only grows vegetatively. It has to be switched to a short photo period in order to produce uh, inflorescence, uh, which are the reproductive uh, yield, in, uh, which are the yield in, uh, in cannabis. 
So this is an example. This is the first experiment that was conducted. It was conducted by Avia Sloan at the time, a master student in the lab, today a PhD student. And we checked five concentrations, a wide range of, um, of potassium from 15 all the way to 230 ppm potassium. We checked it in two, um, in two varieties of commercial uh, ca or cannabis, uh, cannabis, and we checked a very wide array of, of, um, uh, of measurements, morphological development, by, um, bi biomass accumulation, mineral uptake and translocation and accumulation, physiological responses, and I will not have time to go into details into everything, but I put at the bottom of the of this, each slide where the manuscript that it came from. So for more details, please refer to those uh, uh, publications. So what, what happened was, so this is the vegetative stage in potassium, and we can already see it respond normal as is expected. 15 millimolar was too low, so this was a deficiency uh, conditions. And when we went all the way up to 240, there was a, a beginning of, of an effect. In terms, of when we looked at uh, physiology, um, biomass accumulation and plant morphology, habit, we recommend between 100 and 165 uh, milligram per liter PPM is an uh, optimal for development. What about the reproductive stage for potassium? So again, we checked the same range of concentrations. And here, what we what we found is we found again a deficiency symptoms at around 15 and also at 60 some deficiency symptoms, optimal function at around 100 and 175, and a little bit in terms not so much in terms of yield quantity, which looked great, but in terms of function of the plant, again a reduction. So our recommended concentration is about 100 ppm in terms of the way that the plant developed. But what the plant development is not the thing which is most important in cannabis. What's important in, in cannabis, recreational or medicine, is the medical is the is the secondary metabolite profile. And here, what we see that in those plants that look terrible and deficient and yellow, this is where most of our cannabinoids and terpenoids as well uh, were in the highest concentrations. So that means that we can't judge nutrition of a plant like cannabis by the way that the plant looks, because otherwise no one would have grown definitely in 15 ppm or 60 ppm. But the medical, uh, the secondary metabolite profile has to be adjusted and it, it appears to be much better actually under plants which are under stress, under deficiency stress in this uh, response. And this also, uh, if, um, if we looked at, in the, on the function, function of the plant, in this case, this is the photosynthesis and tomato productions and other factors as well. We see again that the range, but usually between 60 or maybe 160 will be optimal. But we again recommend that uh, shifting in order to allow for maximum, uh, for maximal uh, biological activity to, to, to stick to somewhere around 100. What about nitrogen? So again, for the vegetative growth stage, and I'm not going to go into details because you have the references for the manuscripts, um, we can see that we, can ident we identified an optimum range. So 30 and 320 were either deficiency or toxicity range. When we look at the, uh, the, produ uh, the production of biomass, again, uh, somewhere around 160 is uh, what we recommend as an optimum, as an, uh, optimum range. And in this case, plant morphology was in function was uh, optimal. But again, we have to look at the reproductive stage. And when we look at the reproductive st stage, um, again, we see similar to potassium deficiency, obviously in under 30 and, and 80 uh, milligram per liters, we saw deficiency symptoms. The plants look a little bit smaller and the leaf look deficient. And even in the flowers and leaves, so-called sugar leaves uh, looked uh, yellow, yellowish. So just by judging the way that the plant looked, definitely 160 would have been a good, uh, good go. But when we look at the, when, or even more, even as we're shooting to 240, but when we check the secondary, the secondary metabolite profile, for example, we're looking at cannabinoids or, or uh, terpenoids, ter, uh, terpenoids, most of them will be higher, again, under the low concentration of uh, nitrogen as well. And therefore, in one hand, we have to shoot for higher concentrations of nutrients, of uh, secondary metabolites, cannabinoids or terpenoids, which are a good, a good quality or uh, requirement in cannabis. On the other hand, we have to, we want, we growers will be interested in to go into higher concentration of nitrogen for yield, uh, for yield uh, quantity. So it's a, it's a balance here between quantity and quality and kind of an, um, 
uh, kind of a, depending on what exactly the grower is looking is looking for, probably somewhere somewhere around 160 will can be a good a compromise because some some of our uh, terpenoids and some of our uh, cannabinoids still have a good uh, high concentration in this range. The last uh, nutrient that I'll be talking briefly about today is phosphorus. So this was done, experiment that was done by Sivan Shiponi, a master student in the lab, and she has conducted two experiments. Both of them are published now. So this is our results for a vegetative growth, uh, growth stage. Again, when we, we consider there's a wide optimum range for pea nutrition, the fish, five PPM, uh, five PPM were deficiency range, but above this, between 15 and 19, the plants look good and develop okay. So there is a wide range of fifth of right range. Probably we would recommend, and this is what we apply in the lab, we apply 30, not to be too, 30 ppm potassium and, and phosphorus, sorry, not to be too close to the, to the deficiency range. And again, what's interesting and most, more interesting is the reproductive phase. So, so when we look at the reproductive phase, and this was done on several varieties, so we can, we can see again that uh, obviously we were able to identify deficiency ranges as, as five uh, ppm and the 50 ppm still the plants were a bit on the, on the small, on the low side. So for, for yield quality, quantity, definitely, we, definitely something like not less than 30 ppm would be right. But when we look at, plant, and this also goes in accord with plant function, which is kind of briefly, we can look on the, on the right. So this is, for example, photosynthesis or transpiration, stomatal conductance, and many other, other parameters that we've tested, that they increase until they, and they reach kind of an optimal concentration starting with uh, 30 ppm. But when we look at the secondary metabolite profile, again, we see that under deficiency conditions of even 5 ppm, we get for most cannabinoids, we get the highest concentration. So here the grower will have to decide whether he's shooting for higher yield or whether he's shooting for yield quantity in terms of cannabinoid or a, or a mix of the two and then to, to, to select a range. In a, in a publication, this is just very recent that came out um, this month in industrial crop and products. We're also doing calculation of how much cannabinoids per plant or per meter square to help growers uh, select a, a range for a range of work. So in summary, when we look at the, I, said, I presented here some data for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Um, cannabis has a, a, mineral nutrition has a very high impact on secondary metabolism in cannabis. A yield can, a quantity and yield quality in all three elements is often affected differently by mineral nutrition. So it has to be a compromise of deciding what to use. And definitely there's an urgent need for science-based information to support this developing cannabis industry. Because what we've seen so far is just vegetative versus reproductive and steady production throughout the season. Obviously we are working on different application, for example, at the beginning of every productive uh, of, the veget of the flowering season or toward maturation and all this, I mean, I will not have time to discuss today. What's for, for, for forthcoming from uh, my lab? Well, we completed uh, calcium studies, I mean, calcium for the vegetative and reproductive, uh, sorry, magnesium for the reproductive and uh, vegetative. Calcium is underway. We completed, completed we've evaluated zinc and uh, iron as well as the ammonium nitrate ratio, and as well as other uh, secondary, as well as other micronutrients. And this is hopefully we'll be able to uh, publish at least most of it during, uh, uh, during this year. Um, I want to thank, uh, a lot of people. Uh, Dr. Jonathan Gorelick was uh, involved in our uh, humic acid uh, study. Molly Zacks from the Extension Service and the Ministry of Agriculture in Israel is helping us to develop a, and to adjust a, a concentration of the nutrient solution, which is not which is a very detailed task because we keep concentration of all my, other micro and macro elements steady, other than what we are studying, and to a range of. Um, students and the technicians in the lab that have conducted the two part in the, in the studies that I've shown today. So thank you very much and have a remaining wonderful day.